Welcome back aliens, my name is Levin Reddy and let's continue with the series on Python. Now till this point we have seen how do we work with arrays and then we realize if you want to work with multidimensional array or if you want to perform some scientific calculations with array, we have a special package called as numpy and you need to install them so we can install on command prompt or we can install them in the IDE itself. So in this video, we'll see what are the different ways of creating an array in NumPy. So we'll start with it. Now, basically we have six ways you can create an array. The first way is array itself, the function array. The second one is line space. Then we have log space, arrange, zeros, ones. So basically we have these six ways and we have seen the first way, right? But let's, let's do, redo it again. So what I will do here is I will create an array and before using an array, we have to import them, right? So we'll say import numpy, in fact, from numpy import star. That's how you import, right? Now, once you got this, once you have said import, now let's create an array. So I will say ARR is equal to array. And in this, you need to mention the values you want to put. So I will say uh, one comma two comma three comma four comma five. So we got these five elements, right? Now, in, if you remember, in normal array package, we, we need to specify the type as well, right? But here we don't need to do, do that. It's, I mean, we can specify the type, but then it, by default, it will guess the type of values you're entering and based on that, it will, it will convert. And if I say I want to print the value, so you can simply print the value, I would say print, and here I will print A, so ARR, the array. The moment I run this code, you can see we got the output, which is very simple, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, we can also check for the type of it, what type of values we are going for. So if I say D type and if I run this code, you can see it says int 32. So by default, it will check for the type of values you have. Since it is integer, it will say, okay, integer means I will take, so all integers I will take int 32. But what if I s specify some weird value? So if I say 5.0, now what will happen? So if you, if you look at this code, we have integers and we have float together. Now, if you remember the, the concept of array, all the elements should be of same type. So now you guess what will happen. All the values will have the same value possible, right? So let's try, let's try. So if I run this code, you can see it is float. So what happens now is all the values here, they have been converted into float. Example, if I print the array here, so if I say print ARR and if I run this code, you can see all the values. Look at the values there. It is 1.2 point, 3 point, 4 point and 5 point. So every value here is converted into float. So that's the thing. So of course, all the values should be of same type. So we have to do conversion. Now, since you are not doing it explicitly, uh, that's where your implicit conversions comes into picture. So your Python says, hey, I, I can see one float there. I will convert it in the float format, all the values. Now you can also specify the type of element you're working with. So you can give a comma and you can say, hey, this is int. So all the values I want to be int. So you can see we got int32 and then we got the values. What happens if you have the values which is int, but then you're saying float. If I run this code, you can see we got the output, there's no error, but we also got float 64 and look at the values. So when you say float, even if you insert integers, it will convert them into float. So this is how you create an array in NumPy. Now, once we know this, so what this, this is one way, right? This is one way of creating an array. The another way of creating an array is using a different function called as linspace. So what I will do is I will, I will type the same element. And in fact, let me just do that with the help of linspace. I will not be using this D type anymore. So I will be using linspace. So I would say linspace. Again, this function is coming from NumPy itself. So I would say linspace. Linspace will take three parameters. So you can see it says start, stop, and you have to also specify the step. Now what it means, example, if I say zero, and if I give comma 16, now you can see I'm not specifying the third one, which is steps. So if I run this code with this, I will, so any guess what we'll get? Okay, in fact, I will type the first, I will type the third element and then we'll try. So if I say 10, normally what, what happens in normal, if you remember, we have range in list, right? Or we can use range as well. Now, if you use range, we, it also take three parameters. The first one is start, stop. Now the stop in range is excluded, but in this case, the 16 here is included. And then this 10 is not the step here. This 10 is basically means the number of parts you want to go for. So if I say 16 here, so what it will do is it will take this value from zero to 16. In fact, I will go for zero to 15. So zero to 15, the values, number of values is 16, right? So it will, it will break those values. So it will break the range into 16 different parts. 
right? So if I run this code, you can see the see the output. So you are getting the values from zero to fifteen. Now you might be thinking, why dot here? Because all the values here they are float. Why float? Because you are breaking the range into parts, right? So this range is getting divided into sixteen parts. And normally when you divide into parts, you might get a float value. Okay, this is awesome. So when you say 16 and this thing is perfectly works, but what if I what if I go for 20 parts? So now this range, which is from 0 to 15, will be divided into, into 20 parts. So if I run this code, you can see you got 20 parts and you also got some float values, right? So this is how you use line space. Now what if I don't specify the third element, if I only say first and last one, in this case it will create 50 parts because that is by default. So if you don't specify the parts, the number of, number of parts it will be 50. And you can see we got 50 parts here. So that's line space. The next one we have is a range. Now it's not a range, it is a range, okay? So even even I, I got confused when I was doing, the, the, doing this for the first time. So it's a range, you can say, a range, yeah. Now in this a range, so it's the same as range. So in this case, you have to mention the first element, you have to mention the last element, and then you have to also mention the, the steps, okay? Now this is not, uh, this is not the number of parts, the steps. So if I say two, now in link space, it will create two parts, right? But here, it will not get two parts, it, it is its steps. So it will print one, then it will skip two numbers, and it will print three. Okay, let me, just, let me just do that. So if I run, you can see we got the values here, one, three, five, seven, nine, eleven, and 13. So this is what you got. So again, as I mentioned, there are different ways of doing this, right? So this is one of the way. The another way of creating an array is using a concept called as log space. Now log space is different from lin space. The difference is in log space, I mean, of course, lin space and log space, you have this, you, you create parts, okay? Uh, you break down the range into number of parts. But in lin space, the gap between two elements is fixed, right? Example, if you say, if you take any two ele elements, constitute elements, the gap between those two elements will be same. But that's not the case with log space. In log space, if you mention data like uh, one comma 40, uh, comma, let's say five. Now the difference between the number of parts would be five. So the spacing between two numbers would be depend upon the log of it. Okay. Uh, so it will start from, so this will start from 10 raised to one. So 10 raised to one to 10 raised to 40, and it will get divided into five parts. Let me just do that. So if I said run, you can see we got 10 raised to one. The last number is 10, 10 raised to 40 and all the numbers are in between. So if I print the first element here with a specific syntax, I don't want to print E here. I want to print in normal format with first only the uh, after point, I want to just print two digits. So you can do that with the help of percentage. In single code, you have to say percentage uh, dot 2F, again a percentage. So if I run this code, uh, you can see this is the first one. So zero is the first one, this is 10 to one. And if I say the last one, which is five parts, right? So it will be four. And if I run this code, you can see the last one is, now we have to count, okay? So it should, should be somewhere around uh, 40. So this is how it works. This is how you use uh, log space. So all the values, the difference between different values is of log. So look at the values. So those are, those are differentiated with the help of log of uh, the log value, okay? So that's about log space. So till this point, we have seen four functions, array, lin space, range, and log space. Now we have two more. Now these two more are actually very efficient. The first one is zeros and the second one is ones. And you can you can guess it, right? So if you want to create an array, let's say of, of let's say of size 10, and all the values by default should be zero. In that case, you will be using zeros as a function. So I'll be using zeros. And in this zeros, we have to specify the size of it. Example, if I say five, it will create an array of size five with all the numbers as zeros, right? Uh, in other case, we can also use ones. The difference is zeros will give you zeros, ones will give you one, right? It's so simple. But if you can see the output, we are getting one point, right? Which means you are getting float values. That's the same case with zero point, right? So when you say zeros, it will give you zero point. What if I want to mention, hey, I want to work with integer. In that case, you have to say five comma int. Now you are mentioning, hey, I want to work with integers. So please give me integers. If I run this code, you can see we got all the ones, but in integer format. So that's how you can create arrays using different functions, right? So we, it, I, we know it's, it's, it's awesome stuff.
so that's how you create an array so i hope you enjoyed this session let me know in the comment section and do click on the like button if you're enjoying it thank you so much for watching everyone Bye bye